Anyway, let's hear what Ben Shapipi had to say about the Queen. Historic figure in the West passes away. It seems like it's a chance for a lot of people to dance on that person's grave. Not I mean, dude, it's the Queen, dog. Why do you care? Not particularly because they hate that person, but because they don't like the West very much. That is the only... Oh, it's because of anti-Western hate. ...the only reason I can cite for why there are so many people on blue-checked Twitter, so many big thinkers out there who are using Queen Elizabeth II's death as an opportunity to talk about the evils of the British Empire, to talk about the evils of England, to talk about the evils of Western civilization. Hey, the reality is that when a historic figure like Elizabeth II passes away, it reminds us all that there are some pretty stellar things about Western civilization. It reminds us that Again, that's why they're defending it. It's a defense of all the good things. Colonization was good. That's what they keep saying. The link in the chain that we represent in history. Now, are we going to pass on important eternal values to our children? Or are we going to let those things fade away? Are we going to let those things be ripped apart by forces that don't like the things that make the West unique? The thing that made Elizabeth II a unique figure in world history is not only her tenure. I mean, she, was, she presided over the British Empire for 70 years in symbolic fashion, right? Because that was her job. She didn't actually have political power. She was a person who was expected to be a yes, symbol she did. of British unity. Yes, she did. She did have political power. She did have political power. You also said British Empire without skipping a beat. What's wrong with you? Have you no decency, man? What the f which meant really a symbol of Western civilization. Like, what the fuck is going on with Americans, dude? There was a time when we were a proud country, okay? Here, I'll do the Tucker Carlson point. There was a time when we were a proud nation. A nation that actually struck a devastating blow in emancipation, in emancipatory violence, the most justifiable form of violence, as a matter of fact, against the kingdom. Taxation without representation was certainly considered unacceptable at the time, and it is now. However, a lot of Americans who claim to be Republicans, God-fearing patriots, are now defending the Queen. Why? What's going on with Americans? The fact that she presided over the dissolution of the British Empire, the fact that she presided over all of these radical changes that happened in British society, but always held fast to certain principles, both religious and secular, that characterized British society, her death is going to leave a lasting imprint on Britain. Because now we've moved into a new era in the West in which you are not expected to perform your duty, in which you are not expected to represent, say, Judeo-Christian values to your nation, in which the symbolism of having a, a person who unites the realm, that sort of thing is seen as passe. Instead, we are just a, an agglomeration of various folks who have been sort of thrust together by the vicissitudes of history. Queen Elizabeth II represented a rebuttal to that. That's what her life was about. Her life was about assuming the crown at the grand old age of 25, when her father passed away prematurely in 1947, when she was 21, she made a public radio statement dedicating herself to the realm. Dude, what the fuck? Why are they talking like this is a serious job? I'm losing my mind. Why are they talking like this is service? Like th they were doing the honorable thing. Bro, you literally sound like a peasant. What is happening? Like, I, I, do, I don't understand. I need to understand. Is there someone in the chat that understands where the f*** this is coming from? Like, so many conservative Americans are just popping off being like, Be queen! She was great. She led the way. She paved it. She created it. She did such honorable work. Do you upload the video where Dick rides the monarchy yet? No, this is it at the age of 21. I'd like you to imagine a 21-year-old today in any Western country making this sort of move. 21-year-olds in- What do you mean? Dude, literally every 21-year-old, if you ask them, do you want to be- do you want to be king or queen tomorrow? It's probably gonna be like, sure, why not? Like, what? There are entire movies dedicated to this sort of thing. Like, Princess Bride. In America today, to take an example, are some of the most immature human beings who have ever walked the planet. They're not even expected to be as mature as, in many cases, 15 or 16-year-olds, 21-year-olds. This is when you are supposed to be living out your truth. You're not supposed to be assuming duty. It's a reminder of a time in Western civilization when 21-year-olds were expected to actually be adults. This is in the immediate aftermath of World War II, obviously. It, it also happened to be in the quasi-immediate aftermath of the complete abdication of the crown by the older brother of her father, right? In 1936, Edward abdicated to marry a divorcee who happened to be a, kind of a Nazi sympathizer named Wallace Simpson. His <laughs> A bit of a... Bit of a Nazi sympathizer. Like, he's such a royalist that he's like, he's like jumping over the point. Oh my God, you are such a cuck, dude. You're so funny. What an absolute cuck, dude. A bit of a Nazi sympathizer. Just a bit. The abdication after less than a year, according to the UK Sun, elevated Prince Albert to King George VI 
10-year-old Elizabeth was now heir to the throne. So she was only 21 years old when she made this statement. This was after, by the way, during World War II, she actually drove ambulances on behalf of the British military. There's a pretty funny story much later in her life. A Saudi king visited Great Britain and she arrived in, she, he, he got in a car to be driven around and she was behind the wheel. And she was making a statement that women can drive because in Saudi Arabia, women were not and still are not allowed. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. You're not gonna fucking shit on another theocratic monarchy on a video while you're defending the other monarchy, right? No way. That's so crazy. I mean, the third line is, is pretty apparent. I mean, they're not even trying that hard. They're just like, okay. To drive. And um, she then proceeded to take him on apparently an extremely exciting car tour where she was driving at high rates of speed just to freak out the Saudi monarch and demonstrate that women actually were capable of driving. She was coronated in 1953 in Westminster Abbey. Obviously a historic moment because she would then proceed to, to guide the realm, at least in symbolic fashion, all the way from 1953 to 2022, which makes her the longest serving British monarch in the history of the empire. So here was, uh, here was a little bit of the coronation. For those who can't see, that, there's that, that crown. That crown weighs just an enormous amount being placed on her head. That's so cool. It was so cool. You know, the crown that's so heavy from all the uh, kindly uh, given, magnanimously and kindly given crown jewels. Please have these diamonds. We love that. Please. We donated to you. Of people. And um, she obviously became an incredibly popular monarch. She was very sympathetic. She got married in 1947. And th there's all sorts of wonderful film of her, the, the Silver Jubilee in 1977. She married Ben. What was the familial relationship? Oh yeah, that's right. She married her fucking distant cousin. However, uh, given how much the uh, royals inbred with one another are uh, not so distant after all. The simple but heartfelt. You fast forward all the way to 1991. Elizabeth was really the the glue that held the royal family together because obviously her kids were very very difficult. Prince Charles, who is now King Charles the Third. He obviously had an extraordinarily fraught relationship with Princess Diana and with- Bro, he's like, he is like a stan. He's saying Prince Charles had a, a shitty relationship with Princess Diana. <laughs> Yo, he's such a nerd, dude. He loves this shit. They had just a very difficult relationship. Diana was apparently cheating on him. He was cheating on her. It was a complete mess. In any case, in 1991, here was Queen Elizabeth II speaking before Congress. I know what a rare privilege it is to address a joint meeting of your two houses. Thank you for inviting me. The concept, so simply described by Abraham Lincoln as government by the people, of the people, for the people, is fundamental to our two nations. Your Congress and our Parliament. You're making fun of him, but if you watch American Kardashians, how is it any better, really? Wait, what? But I don't do that either. What the fuck are you talking about? Why did you just, like, compare me doing an imagined thing to what Ben's doing in front of your eyes? What? Also, nobody's like, the Kardashians should fucking have royal powers. Like, bro, Kim Kardashian can't fucking veto bills, okay? <laughs> and, and we make fun of them all the time. And as shitty as they are, they didn't go to, like, South Yemen and go, hey, you should stay colonized, actually. Or uh, oversaw, once again, the torture of, like, Kenyans and shit. Uh, put down communist revolutions all around the world. And then whitewash that shit. Any other person that does the shit that the queen does, you'd be like, that's insane. Come on, stop. Why are you defending this person? But because she's the queen, you're like, well, no, she's supposed to do that. I do declare. Civilizations. And the chief among the many treasures that we have inherited from our predecessors. Okay, so that right there, by the way, we should just keep that in mind, what she says right there, because that is the reason why so many people are deeply upset about, you know, the reaction to Princess, uh, to, to Queen Elizabeth II's death. There, there are a bunch of people on the left who hate Queen Elizabeth because of that, because of that, because of the idea that there's an Anglo-American tradition of parliamentary rule and democracy, and these things are bad. Famously, Anglo-American tradition of parliamentary democracy, which the left hates. Like, so many parts of that sentiment i don't even know where to begin i like it's insane how when did the parliamentary democracy become the anglo-american tradition what is the anglo-american tradition the only anglo-american tradition is like white supremacy dog what the fuck do you mean and also you're <laughs> referencing the queen while talking about 
Parliamentary democracy. Where? What is your brain on? What are you doing? We're going to get to the left's reaction to her death because it really is quite astonishing that this historic human being dies. And the first reaction of a lot of people is, well, the British Empire was bad and colonialism was bad and democracy and free trade apparently were bad. Like these things, historically speaking, came as a package that does not dim the, the evils of colonialism. It does not mean that imperialism is a good thing. But as we'll discuss in just a second, trying to pretend that the legacy of the British Empire or of Queen Elizabeth II is somehow <laughs> an evil, just overall it's bad and evil because I guess Western civilization is bad. That is, that is a fool's errand. As we were talking about with regards to sort of the internal family struggles in 19... 19- yeah, the left hates parliamentary democracy, which is why they're making fun of the queen's death. Of course, as you know, a fundamental role in the parliamentary system is having a fucking queen. No other country could have a, a, a parliament without a queen. You know what I mean? It's just, that's why the left hates the parliamentary system. What? Which was also invented in England? Like, no, no country before that had one, actually. What the fuck is he saying? 1992, that was the big year, right? So the, the year after this address to Congress, that is when the marriage between- Isn't reacting to the Ben Shapiro like the lowest effort content you can do? I mean, fucking your mom would be the lowest effort content because, you know- she comes over willingly and is here waiting every night. Queen Diana and Prince Charles started to break up. That is the same time that uh, there's a, a biography on Diana that talked about how Diana had sort of been abandoned by the royal family. Now, the truth is that Diana was, again, not a super easy person. Diana was, she came into the, the royal family under kind of dim circumstances, given the fact that Charles had originally dated her older sister. She'd come in, she was considered the people's princess, but then she also, you know, was, was not a particularly stable figure. In any case, when... He's like anti-Diana, and I kind of like this. This is making him more human. Like, I mean, it's the worst possible position you could take on the monarchy, obviously, which is expected. But I do kind of love how into it he is. Like, he's like an actual stan. You know his ass watched the crown, but it's more than that. Like, he's been a... He's been a monarchy stand for a minute, it seems like. Princess Diana was killed in the car crash in 1997, that sort of historic moment. There was a lot of anger. During the 1980s, the queen tried to stop Princess Diana's work in HIV advocacy, telling her to do something more pleasant, but Diana ignored her, instead using her platform to tackle stigma and offer comfort to terrify people sick with what was then a terminal illness. Ben Shapiro's like, I don't think the queen actually ended up executing Diana, but it would be cool if she did, because she deserved it. <laughs> Because it's like they weren't in proper levels of mourning. She was already divorced from Prince Charles by this time, of course. And, um, and the, the queen had to make a public statement about uh, the, the death of Princess Diana. Here's a little bit of that. Since last Sunday's dreadful news, we have seen throughout Britain and around the world an overwhelming expression of sadness at Diana's death. So what I say to you now as your queen and as a grandmother I say from my heart. First, I want to pay tribute to Diana myself. She was an exceptional and gifted human being. In good times and bad, she never lost her capacity to smile. You guys want to know something crazy? Did you know that part of the reason why, of course, like, they famously considered Princess Diana to be bad was because she didn't have enough high... She didn't have, like, she didn't come from a high enough family. Like, her familial lineage was not royal enough. And, like, she presented herself as, like, one with the commoners and whatnot. Right? And I didn't even learn about her actual background until like like a year ago or something. Bro, she was still insanely rich. Like she literally was going to the same schools and shit. You know what I mean? Like they just thought that she was not lordly enough. She just wasn't high enough in nobility. Doesn't seem like your parents were fucking related to one another. Ah, eh, not good enough. Smile and laugh nor to inspire others with her warmth and kindness. I admired and respected her for her energy. How could you marry a peasant who grew up like this? You can visit the late Princess Diana's childhood home in England this summer. I mean, dude, when you see this, you're like, oh, what the fuck, right? Because, like, the way that they presented Diana as, like, the, the people's princess. And commitment to others. I hope okay, so again, this is sort of Elizabeth II's role, is that whenever there was a problem, it was her job to sort of patch everything back together. And then, of course, she, uh, she gave a, a speech in the middle of COVID that was, I think, really comforting to a huge number 
of of people. Oh my God, he is a stan. That's how you know he's a stan. Because, like, he's even praising her speech during COVID and shit. Oh, my God. Like, normally, he'd be like, if it's someone that Ben Shapiro doesn't like, and they give a COVID speech, he would literally just be like, uh, from her ivory tower, the queen decided to come out and speak to us commoners by addressing via a Zoom meeting, sitting in front of a golden throne. I mean... <laughs> The symbolism of this, <coughs> the symbol of a, the symbolism of this woke moralism, is is too ridiculous not to laugh at. But it, but when it's like when it's someone that he likes, he's just like, oh, brilliant, brilliant. She was so comforting during COVID. Oh, those times were so devastating. Across the world, not just in Great Britain, in the middle of time of global turmoil. This is so funny, bro. What the fuck? How is the Queen's take any different than like the Imagine song that everyone in Hollywood made? I'm speaking to you at what I know is an- Like, yeah, look at this, look. Wearing all of her jewels at a time when people are suffering because they can't get back to work because they desperately want to, but they can't because of woke moralists. And the queen is sitting in front of a gold-plated drawer, possibly stolen from some other faraway country, telling you, the commoner, that you should stay indoors and fear not, that we're all in this together, saying we're all in this together from her chateau. Absolutely unacceptable. Increasingly challenging time. A time of disruption in the life of our country. A disruption that has brought grief to some, financial difficulties to many, and enormous changes to the daily lives of us all. We should take comfort. Okay, so I mean, it was, it was those sorts of values that, that she represented, right? The sort of quiet, solid belief in, in eternal values over the course of time. The sort of British stiff upper lip, the idea that you can take on challenge. Oh my god, he loves her, bro. This is funny. This is kind of cute. This is kind of cute. It's it's a weird, in a very weird way, it's kind of cute seeing Ben, like, go this crazy. I'm watching Ben Shapiro uh, go absolutely bananas over the queen. What? Okay, I'm glad you don't have a microphone on you. All those things are what she symbolized. Now, the backlash to her death <laughs> materialized immediately. I mean, not people who were, were anti-her dying, people who were very pro-her dying, as it turns out, which is just insane. I'm sorry, that, that, that is a, an extraordinary response to the death of a woman who literally had a symbolic role, and that symbolic role involved things like telling people to buck up under pressure, to understand their heritage, to believe in the values of democracy. So it, it, it came in a couple forms. One was the, okay, well, she's a queen, who cares? Whatever. You know, we're, we're American, we, we fought the crown just so we wouldn't have to care about stuff like this. Okay, I get it. The re wow, 13 minutes in, he finally says something I agree with. Yeah, that's the whole point. That's like one of the few good things that America did, okay? America did a lot of fucked up things in its founding. But the one fucking, the one good thing, the one good thing was this. Jesus Christ, man. Reality is that the monarchy of Britain right now is not anything remotely resembling the monarchy of Britain in the time of King George III. She had no political power. And this is something people ought to remind themselves, is that when they're yelling at Queen Elizabeth II, they're yelling at a person whose role is entirely symbolic. She had no political power in Britain. You know oh my God, if we accept Queen Elizabeth as our monarch, will these two go away? Dude. Yeah, he, he had a voice crack. That's how much he rides for the fucking queen, dog. I mean, he shit on Princess Di. The United States fought King George III and Parliament in order to be free of the political power of King George III. But the truth is that apparently people have a need for royalty. In the United States, we've supplanted the idea of a symbolic leader who is who's like Queen Elizabeth II, we've supplanted that with a celebrity culture that is filled with babbling idiots who repeat whatever lines are put in front of them and apparently take their cultural cues and political cues. Oh my God, he's giving the game away. He's giving the game away. He's giving the game away. He's literally saying, we all need like royals, the Lord above ourselves because we have peasant brain. And if that is like, a, if that's a universal truth, if that's like a natural phenomena, then I would rather have them be proper. Also, Donald Trump was the president. Like, he was your president, man. You defended him for four fucking years. What the fuck? From other Dude, every libertarian... I used to say, like, a lot of libertarians are just straight-up fascists who want to smoke weed. And, you know, the Donald Trump presidency kind of showed that. Because they all were super on board with, like, one of the key tenets of libertarian principles is that uh, the, the freedom of travel, right? And, and not having, like, this surveillance state, police state... And they completely dropped that. They were like, Trump is so great. But now I'm beginning to realize, like, no, they unironically would love a monarch. And th those are our royalty. Over here, our royalty is like Kim Kardashian and, and Jennifer Lawrence. 
I know. Oh my God, Jennifer Lawrence.